So God never did anything great without something big happening. So the enemy we are pursuing and the expectation God is telling you today is what I'm going to point you towards. Because your expectation might be different. But I want you to use God's eye and plant your expectation. God gave us the things that is going to happen. He said, this is what I'm going to do. And he said, remind me of my word. So your duty as a person that experienced the flood is to remind God his word. You said you will restore. I'm expecting you to do it. Amen. When those who are coming to adjust, do adjustment to your home and everything come, all you need to tell God, you said you will restore. And I'm expecting you to do what? Because there are some people that will come there, the enemy will send, send them to undermine what God wants to do. But through your faith in Christ Jesus, you change that situation. Amen. Before the person comes, talk to God. Say, remember, you said this is a year of what? And you're about to restore my house and restore all that I've lost. And when you say that, you've reminded God of what? you reminded God of what? God's word. So what God expects from us at this time, somebody opened Isaiah 40 and 1. Isaiah 40, verse 31. The book of Isaiah, 40, verse 31. What did he say? They that does what? They that wait upon the Lord shall do what? Shall he do what? I have continue. They shall do what? Like eagles. And what else? They shall run and never be weary. And they shall walk and not what? Hallelujah. Most of the things that have been destroyed has been too old in your home. Amen. It's about time for them to go. Amen. God wants to change them to be one. Hallelujah. You don't want to pour a new wine into an old bottle. Amen. God wants to change it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How God is going to do it is none of your business. Amen. All you need to do is wait. Wait upon the Lord, Amen. and your strength will be renewed. Amen. The joy of the Lord should be your strength. Amen. Wait. And the next thing God is asking you to do is to be glad. Yes. Proverbs 10, 28. Be glad. Hallelujah. Amen. I said be glad. Be glad. Open Proverbs chapter 10, verse 28, and read it. Proverbs? Yes. The way of God is a stronghold to the upright. It's a destruction to the workers of the people. The what? Proverbs 10, 28. Somebody read it. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness. But the expectation of the wicked shall be. The hope of the righteous shall be what? Gladness. Gladness. The expectation of the wicked is what? Gladness. So God expects you to be glad. Amen. I don't care what you've lost. God will replenish. Amen. Because this is a year of restoration. Amen. You're going to hold God by his word. Because he said, I'm going to restore. Everything that can come one must give it. And then the third thing you need to do is to trust. Wait 
be glad and trust. Psalm 37 verse 3. Trust. Because when Peter trusted in Christ, he walked on water. When he took his trust off of Christ and his eyes and his motion focused on the weather, he started to sink. So what you need to do is to trust. Psalm 37 verse 3. Read it if you see it. Trust in the Lord and do good. Hallelujah. So you trust in the Lord. You trust Him. Don't look at those things on the curve. Hallelujah. On the curve side, don't bother about those things. God has a better things coming to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of you might be worried. There goes my equity in the house. Your equity is going nowhere. Amen. Because when God is going to restore, he will restore everything. Amen. How he's going to do it, do not listen to all the news and everything, but God said he will do it. Amen. I'll trust him this time around. Because he is God. He is God. The hope of the righteous shall be glad. So you need to be glad because God is at work at this time. I want us to understand that when God said this is a year of restoration, he knew that a flood would take place. Amen? Amen? So he prepared us with this wonderful idea for the year which we've been teaching and we the Lord went to the extent of teaching us how to be glad and rejoice when we are going through difficulties. That's why God took us today. God said that David is a man after my own heart. Then the answer was, why should David, after all the atrocities he committed, still be a man after God's heart? We found out that David, at the point, he was running for his life. David was hiding in a cave. David said, bless the name of the Lord. David said, come and join me and let us praise him. Yes. Psalm 34. Have you read that? That is somebody running from his palace. His life was at stake. And he's praising the Lord and telling others, to join him to bless the name of the Lord. That's the where you need to find yourself. The answer to your situation, the answer to the destruction that you've been going through is saying, bless the name of the Lord. Amen. And tell others to join you Amen. and bless his holy name. Amen. Because God will turn it around and the name of the Lord will glorify. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that God will serve. He's a living God. He speaks to his people. Amen. God speaks to his people. Yes. God did, does. And when you ask God something, he does it. He does. The little inconvenience we are going through is, com is nothing compared to what God is about to do. Amen. Hallelujah. The little inconvenience. The devil thought that you're shocking. He said, you don't have flood insurance. How are you going to do this? Pharaoh thought they were shocking. The Red Sea. They don't have any boat to cross the Red Sea. There was no ship to take them across. There was no bridge for them to walk through. Millions of people. Literally, they were shot in. Hallelujah. Amen. But with God, you are not shot in. Hallelujah. Amen. With human understanding. That's why the Bible made it clear. 
Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Say, trust in the Lord. Do not lean on your own understanding. In everything you do, acknowledge Him. He will direct your path. Israel got the point that they were no longer trusting the Lord. That's why in verse 11 of where we took our text, Exodus 14, 11, they said, and they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, has not taken us away to die in the wilderness. Wherefore hast thou dealt us with us? To hast thou dealt us with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? They were living on their own understanding. It's not this, the word that we did tell you in Egypt. Say, let us say, Lord, that we may serve Egyptians. Can you imagine? How many of you want to be slave forever? Because they saw some challenges. They felt that Egypt far much better because of the challenges. But the word of God is telling you this morning. Those challenges will bring you from the lower expectation to the higher expectation. Amen. Those challenges will revolutionize your life that you have a testimony Hallelujah. for your children, children, what God has done. Amen. They were very annoyed against Moses. Verse 13. Moses said unto them, Fear what? Now. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Do you know that God is looking for people that will stand still and speak the word of God? Yes. And see God move. Yes. That's what God is expecting. Looking for people that will stand firm and speak the word of God and see God move. God has no other person to speak for him except you. Except you. When you start crying and getting discouraged, the enemy says, Yes, this person is shot him. Has nowhere to go. But when you open your mouth, hallelujah, and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. All the vices of the enemy scatters. Amen. Because when his name is blessed, yes. the presence of God has been attracted. Because when you say, bless the name of the Lord, and God will take care of the situation. When somebody in a cave can bless the name of the Lord, how many of you are in a cave today? This running from the flood, I enjoy so much. Eating whatever I want to. Order my coffee, they will serve me coffee before I go to bed. Is that somebody go around from the house? <laughs> Bless the name of the Lord. I want you to, wherever you find yourself, glorify the name of the Lord there. Because you, you are the blessing. Not the place you left. Yes. Not the material thing, oh, yes. but you, yes. I'm the blessing. as long as the favor of God is in your life, yes. wherever you step in, that favor will show up. Yes. 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 That favor will show up. Amen. I want you to understand that God will serve as a living God. Yes. If I could walk to a house, I told God, I don't want this house to flood. And I left. And God preserved the house. You are serving the living God. Amen. Yes. Yes. On the 14th, walked to my pastor's house, said, God, my pastor is in Nigeria. The wife is in Nigeria. This house should not flood. Amen. And I left. Every house flooded. 
that house didn't flood. Amen. That's the God we sang. Amen. I want another house. I say, God, this woman doesn't have a husband. He just lost the husband. This house should not flood. Amen. And God preserved that house. Amen. Isn't it say God will serve? Yes. It's a living God. Amen. For you, that God flooded, the presence of God is chasing you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I said the presence of God is what? Chasing me. And how you can attract it is to say, God, I wait upon you. I am glad to witness what you're about to do. And I'm trusting you. I'm not going to lean on my own understanding. I will conduct acknowledge you so that you will direct my path. We are serving a living God. The body of Christ, God already prepared us for this. If you're not prepared, I am. Because Isaiah 41, 17, through verse 20, he said, they are afflicted and the needy are seeking water. Yeah. But there is none, and their tongues is parched with thirst. But I, the Lord, will answer them. Amen. I said, Lord said he will answer you. Amen. Myself, God of Israel, I will not forsake them. Right. I will open rivers on the bare heights yeah. and springs in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water Amen. and the dry land fountain of water. Hallelujah. When God uses water in that sense, put down their financial blessings. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Because that's what you're expecting. You're not expecting water now. Literally. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You say, God, you say you will make it. In what? In the dry and the land of, that you make it what? Make springs. In the springs, in the midst of the valleys, I will make the wilderness a pool of water. A pool of finances. Because in the wilderness, in the valley, the Lord said you make a pool of water. God is going to make a pool of funding. And we take care of the situation. Amen. All we need to do is to remind him his word. Not that he forgot. But when you remind him, that means that your faith has now connected Amen. with his divine word. How many of you, when you want to iron your clothes, you will bring the iron and you don't plug it to the tracery? And then you start ironing. Will that iron do the job? No. You have to plug it to what? That's why you remind God of His word. Say, God, you've been teaching us that this year is the year of restoration. I'm expecting you to restore everything. Everything and restore it in abundance. Jeremiah 30, 17 said, For I will restore health to you Amen. and heal your wounds. Amen. God said, We will restore health and heal the wounds the mold is trying to bring to your home. How many of you experienced mold already? Yes. Those mold and everything, the Lord said, I will heal. Hallelujah. That you will heal. God will take care of every one of them. You see, because the way God thinks about things, they are not the way we do things. Because His knowledge and understanding far much higher than the way we think. He said, for everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. Because you have been born of God. You have to overcome this flood, amen? amen? And he said, after you have suffered a little while, Joel, chapter 2, verse 25 through 26, after you have suffered a little while, no, I'm sorry, Peter, 1 first Peter 5, 10, after you suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself 
restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. I want you to open first Peter 5:10. After you have suffered a little while. I know some of you have suffered a little while because of this. I remember, was it on the 16th? My wife couldn't get ice water to drink. Cold water. They had some water, but they are not cold because there was no light. She called if I could get ice somewhere, anywhere. I went everywhere. I couldn't find where I can buy a bag of ice. I stood there and said, the Spirit of the Lord said, go to CVS. I went to CVS. CVS said, they don't have, have any eyes. Then the Spirit of the Lord pointed my eyes into their fridge. I saw some water, cold water there. I picked them up and took it to her. And she quenched her thirst. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Those things we take for granted. Your refrigerator, you open it 100 times a day. And take whatever you want to take. But this time you open it up, there's no cold water in there. And you wonder. So God allows certain things for us to acknowledge Him and praise Him for what He could do. Because when He said, I'm thirsty and I couldn't get eyes. I said, no, God, there's a solution to this. So when I stood there, I said, oh, look at it. cold water in there. So I bought it. When I got there, a dollar 87 cents. I asked the cashier, did you only increase one bottle of water to a dollar 87 cents because of the situation? He said, no, that's the price. I said, okay, I'm going to buy it. So by the time he finished, he brought it down. He said, because you remember of CVS. The price has come down. I said, thank God. <laughs> Bless the Lord. <laughs> Bless the name of the Lord. We are serving a living God. The Bible made it clear that for as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth and make it bare and sprout and the furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So will my word be, which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. Amen. And you will go out with joy and be led forth with peace. Yes. The mountains and the hills will break forth into shouts of joy before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Isaiah 55, 10 through 13. All the trees will clap their hands. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. When the trees clap their hands because of God's doing. Human beings, what will you do? You shout for joy. You shout for joy. So a year of restoration, you don't need to panic for about anything. You are about getting things God has proposed for you. Amen? Amen. You are about receiving God's blessings. Amen. Because He is God. Amen. The mighty one for that matter. Proverbs 23, 18 says, For surely there is an end, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. Hallelujah. Amen. Your expectation shall not be what? No. That is an end to the flood. Your expectation to rebuild shall not be what? No. Hallelujah. I said what? Hallelujah. Amen. Look, when you want to rebuild, don't go with those cheap materials. Because you want to save money. No cheap materials. <coughs> Go with the good materials. Amen? Go with good materials. God will pay for it. Amen. This is where your faith in God <laughs> is going to start working. Don't go, uh, who knows, 
go with the best. Because you serve God, who is the best God, who knows it all, who prepared heaven, the street of gold, we shall walk in heaven. Amen? Amen. The street of gold. God will make it happen. Because when God wants to restore things, do you know that when God restored Jesus Christ to life, Jesus Christ was one man in Israel. But when he went to the cross, the grave, and resurrected, Jesus Christ is no longer one man in Israel. Jesus Christ all over the world. When you call his name, everything panics. Hallelujah. Kingdom of darkness. You call his name, he heals there. Even though he's in heaven. That is the God we serve. Amen. So, Jesus Christ is no longer because, could you imagine the centurion? One day Jesus to come and heal the, the one that serves him. He has to look for Jesus where Jesus was. And when he saw Jesus, he said, please, I need your help. So how many of us, assuming that Jesus is still in Israel, how many of us will go there every time to ask him to come and help us? We would have been miserable. Because when you think about your mortgage, you say, if I take this money to fly to Israel, to Jesus, they will repossess my home or my car. You say, I, don't, I can't go this year. Next year, I wait if I can save the money. But that's not what God did. God sent him to the cross, let him go to the grave, and when he resurrected, in his name, every knee shall bow, every mouth shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. When you name that name, power of darkness, crumble. So what the enemy has meant for evil, God has turned it around for good. That's what you are, a child of God, a child of favor. body of Christ, God already made it clear that I'm with you, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But sometimes it felt that nobody's there with you. Amen. How many of you felt this? Yes. I do feel that sometimes, but God is there. He's there. And watching you to activate your faith. Amen? Amen? Because that God will never do anything until your faith right. comes up. That's, right. That's the kind of God He is. Amen. Yeah. Your faith will take you to places. And those things you think that will never happen, God will make it to happen by your faith. Psalm 37 verse 3 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Let me look at that do good. How many of you will do good now you are going through difficulties? Eh? Will doing good be suspended? Or do you get out of what you are going through? No. This is the time any good you can do it. Because that's opening the doors for you. I said that's opening the doors for you. Because God is watching everything that is going on. Everything. Whatever we are doing is watching. Those of you who have been here have been saying I'm going to build a sanctuary. And most of you have been looking at your income. Say how are you going to do this, Pastor? And you've been looking at the numbers. And be leaning on your own understanding. So right now I know in my know that the building has been completed. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. It's 
completed. Last time I was telling you that I fell because of the gate. Hurt myself, bruised. I said I needed an electric gate. I took an offering to buy a gate, to fix a gate. I got at the five dollars. Do you know why I got at the five dollars? Because the enemy wants to use that to discourage my faith. So I look at this and I say, God will multiply it. So that I'll get the gate that we need in this church. Amen. Watch what God is about to do. Hallelujah. You will testify. Amen. I say you will testify. Amen. There's nothing that God will not amaze you. Forget about you don't have insurance. God is your insurance. Amen. I say God is your insurance. Amen. God has insured you. Insured your life. Insured everything you lost. Do not live on your own understanding. Because that's the, what the enemy wants you to do. When you lean on your own understanding, you'll be having a sleepless night. Thinking how it is going to happen. Don't ever let the enemy lead you that route. I sleep good. I'm telling you, if I want to sleep as I'm preaching now, I need to do put this. I, I'm telling you, ask my wife. Because once I walk and lay my like on the bed, I'm gone. <laughs> Whoever I owe should wait until when I get up. <laughs> Hallelujah! I don't want anything to disturb my sleep. And God gave me that grace. I don't care whatever it is. Nothing stops my sleep. I get it. As soon as I want to sleep, I lay down. Then when I wake up, I remember that Bill has not been paid. And then we, we find a way to pay it. We are serving a serving God. God who is supreme. The kingship of God and the Godhood, nobody can imagine. To say that God is sovereign is to declare that God is God. To say that it's a sovereign God is to declare that God is God. If you are faithful, He will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen? Amen? Let me tell you one secret you need to understand. Your help, when you say, where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord. Not those you expect that they will help you. Those people will not show up. Those you focus that at this time they are coming to rescue you. They will pretend that nothing happened. When they call you, they just talk on the surface. But your head comes from the Lord. Amen. And those God is going to bring your way. You've never done anything to them. Some of them don't even know you. Hallelujah! Amen. Do you know why God does things that way? He does it that way because he takes the glory. Because those you know you've invested in, when they show up, you say, oh, those things I did for them some years ago, that's why they are paying me back. So you take the glory for what you did. No. God said, I am a jealous guy. Yes, yes. Whatever I'm going to do for you, you didn't do anything to those people. So I'm going to bring them into your life. Yes. And it will be a blessing. So that you glorify him. Amen. Amen. A sovereign God. To say that God is sovereign is to declare that he's almighty. The possessor of all power. In heaven and in earth. So that none can defeat his counsel. Or thwart his purpose. Or resist his will. Psalm 115 verse 3. When you say that God is sovereign, nobody can thwart his plan. Nobody can change his will. Nobody can change what he was about to do. 
Nobody can turn it upside down. God is going to do it the way he wants to do it, when he wants to do it, to whom he wants to do it for. Nobody detects to God what he's going to do. If somebody detects to God, it will not reach us. It will start from the billionaires. But the God we serve is not the God of the billionaires. It's the God of have-nots. Because it's the have-nots that seek him. Seek the Lord where you can find him. This is the time to seek him. This is the time to seek him. Amen. And everything God does, you start giving him the praise that belongs to him. So God is a serving God. Is to declare that he is the God among the nations. Amen. Setting up kingdoms, overthrowing empires, and determining the cost of dynasties as pleases him best. God is going to give us the present that he wants us to have. Amen. I don't care if both of them are criminals. God will pick one. Yes, and when God picked that one, that president's heart will be in God's who? Hallelujah. And that's the God you serve. He will turn it around. Whatever you want him to do, that's what he will do. Why are we afraid of things going around us? We should not. We need to pray. God will choose one. And when he chooses that one, his heart in God's hand. And he will direct it. Hallelujah. You want to remember Nebuchadnezzar? You want to remember Nebuchadnezzar? Amen. When he was doing things, think it was doing it by himself. Until God visited him. When God visited him, when the, city, when the whole situation cleared, Nebuchadnezzar rose up and said, Jehovah is the most high God. Those songs, the songs we enjoy today, it came from somebody who didn't believe. When you dance and dance, you didn't know what it took God to bring out that song. Hallelujah. God is writing a song concerning you. God is writing a history concerning you. Job went through it. Job's history is encouraging so many. When God is dealing with you, your history will encourage many. Amen. Don't be discouraged. Don't doubt. Don't feel that you are abandoned. Nobody has abandoned you. If there's a help you're expecting, it hasn't showed up, your help is on the way. Amen. Your help is on the way. Amen. Your help is on the way. Amen. All you need to do is wait, be glad, and trust. All your history. Father, we, we thank you and we bless you. We glorify your holy name. You are God Almighty. The ancient of days, the beginning and the end. God who knows that this day will be. God who knows that August the 13th and August the Lord.